Stage 3 of the Vuelta Algarve, a race that's available live and on demand all this week on GCN+. It was already set to be the longest stage of the week, but a slight amendment to the route increased the distance to 211 kilometres. The biggest breakaway of the race so far went up the road fairly soon after the flag dropped. Seven riders carving out a maximum advantage of a little under seven minutes, but none of them a danger on the general classification. It was yet another day where we saw a crash. Ben Tulit of Ineos Grenadiers touching a wheel and hitting the deck for the second time this week, taking David Liveramento of the Atom General team with him. Thankfully, both managed to get back on their bikes and finish the stage. The attacks in the breakaway started as the main peloton bore down on them. Helder Gonsalves of Kelly Smolder's team particularly active and taking Jaristi of Escatel and Eolalia of Glass Drive Q8 with him. However, the bunch were very close behind them by this point and so they would be caught before the top. Joao Matias of the Tavfair Mortagua team determined to add to his tally of KOM points and this effort particularly impressive given how much energy he's already expended in the breakaways over the last two days. He would take the three points as he crossed the line first and with that the outright lead in the King of the Mountains competition. Three riders found themselves cleared down the other side of that final climb. Eolalio of the Glass Drive Q8 team, who'd formed part of the early breakaway. His teammate Fabio Costa, plus Radio Popular's Hugo Nunes. Three Portuguese riders in one of their home races. Behind them, Alpes and Fenix were taking on the bulk of the responsibility of chasing, trying to set up their sprinter Tim Belier for the win. Quickstep Alpha Vinyl, meanwhile, were keeping themselves out of the wind and saving as many of their riders for the finale as possible. The last rider out front was caught just outside of 10 k's to go and from there it was a very fast run in towards the finish line in Faro. Most of that would be on fast, fairly straight roads but they didn't have to deal with a roundabout with 500 metres to go and a slight drag uphill to the finish line from there. Alpes and Phoenix driving things on the front. Arkea Samsic also there for their French sprinter Hugo Hofstetter. With just under two and a half k's to go, they changed direction again, and from this point, it was really important to be in a good position. The Belgian Remco Evenepoel was back to his lead-out duties for quick-step Alpha Vinyl today, drilling it on the front for his teammate and stage one winner Fabio Jakobsen. Another monumental turn saw the young Belgian lead the peloton under the Flamme Rouge and into that final roundabout. And that left Bert van Leeberger on the final lead-out duties for Jakobsen. A quick glance over his shoulder and he took off with 400 metres to go. Jakobsen once again being given the perfect delivery towards the line, but on this occasion, Tim Malier was able to get himself right on the wheel. Inside 200 metres to go and Jakobsen launched his sprint. Brian Kokart of Coffin is unable to match the power of the Dutchman, whilst Malier was doing his best to get around Kokart and fight for the win. However, it wasn't to be for him, but it was for Jakobsen. Two stage wins in Algarve, four wins this year. He is unstoppable right now. A good job all around once again for Quickstep Alpha Vinyl. Here is the overhead shot for you, and in this you can see that Malia had to scrub a little bit of speed as he threaded himself between Kokar and the barriers. Didn't look like it affected the result. He just couldn't quite get himself on terms with Jakobsen. So this is the top 10 on the stage, Malia in second behind Jakobsen, Kokar in third, Christoph fourth, then it's Hofstetter, Russo, Meus, Gazzoli, Joyce and Leangel rounding out the top 10. So no change on the general classification, still the Frenchman David Godou of Groupama FDJ who leads that going into tomorrow's time trial. McNulty at one second in second place, Hayter, Avonapool, Bistrom, Bernard, Martinez and Galapan uh, all pretty much on the same time. Eight seconds back to Galapan, Pidcock at 17, Battistella at 29. That will all change tomorrow, though, because we have an individual time trial of 32 kilometres. It's sure to cause a major shake-up in the general classification. We'll be back live on GCN Plus from 1600 GMT, so 1700 CET for live coverage of that stage. Make sure you join us then. I will see you tomorrow.